Okay, I'm gonna try the captions. Okay, great. Okay, I'm, uh, yeah, thank you all for inviting me to give you an introduction to, to Perlmutter. Uh, I'm Jay Srinivasan, the project director of, uh, of the formal project that we have within NERSC to, to bring in the system. Um, let's see, so Perlmutter is, is gonna be the, uh, I think the caption keeps uh, mispronouncing it, but, or mistyping it. Um, so Perlmutter will be the basis of, of our GPU systems for, for the next uh, few years, starting later, later on in, in 2020 and 21. Uh, so I just wanted to give a quick introduction to NERSC. I think most people here might be familiar with NERSC. Uh, we are the uh, Mission High Performance Computing Facility for the Office of Science. Uh, and, uh, you know, on the left you see a bunch of statistics about NERSC. We have uh, thousands of users, hundreds of projects, and a lot of code. And what that means is really we have a diverse uh, workload. Uh, and that diverse workload, uh, you know, is characterized by simulations, uh, by data analysis and le recently uh, learning as well, right? <clears throat> Sorry, getting some comments here. Okay. Um, so uh, what that means is also that the uh, systems that we get, and uh, you can see the roadmap here from later earlier on in this decade, uh, have to be able to cater to that uh, really diverse workload uh, that we have, right? So starting in 2013, we had uh, uh, Edison, <clears throat> uh, and then followed by Cori, which uh, gave our users an introduction to the many core uh, era. And then uh, uh, later on this year and in, into 21, as I'll talk about, uh, we're going to have uh, the ninth generation of our systems, which we're calling Perlmutter. Uh, and uh, those will have a mix of both CPU and GPU nodes on, on the system. And then later on uh, uh, in this decade, we'll, we'll get into NERSC 10, right? <clears throat> so what is Perlmutter? It's a system that, uh, you know, we've, uh, right from the get-go when we started the project, we decided it was, it was gonna be a system optimized for science. So uh, what does that mean? It's, it's a system that provides a, a substantial increase in performance over, over Cori, which is our current uh, KNL-based system. Uh, that's three to four X of Cori. Uh, it has a mixture of both GPU accelerated and CPU only nodes that uh, meet uh, these three pillars of our needs, right? Uh, simulations, data analysis, and, and learning, right? Uh, the large CPU partition gives us a capability similar to what we have on Cori today, right? Allows us to support these complex workflows that we have using all of the resources um, uh, that we have on our system. <clears throat> um, uh, that's compute, storage, and networking, right? Um, the, uh, the data stack that's optimized uh, for this system will enable us to support both uh, analytics and machine learning at scale, right? So uh, what does the system consist of? The, the little diagram on the right shows you the major pieces. Uh, we have CPU nodes, uh, we have GPU accelerated nodes, uh, we have an all flash integrated storage, uh, and then on the, all of this is connected together using uh, the next generation of uh, interconnect by, by Cray called uh, uh, Slingshot, and that's an ethernet compatible interconnect. And um, what that does is it basically uh, opens up the inside of these machines to in sort of a seamless fashion to the outside world, right? Um, and it enables data movement uh, much, much more easily uh, than was possible before uh, on, on systems like Edison or even Core, right? Uh, the, uh, the GPU only nodes, as I'll talk about, have four NVIDIA uh, GPUs with uh, you know, the latest tensor cores and uh, uh, interconnect. Uh, as well as high bandwidth memory. And they'll have one uh, AMD Milan CPU, which is the next generation from what uh, people are probably seeing now on the Rome line. Uh, we'll have over 6,000 Ampere GPUs. <clears throat> the, uh, the interconnect, as I've talked about, is uh, this yeah, ethernet compatible high performance interconnect. And really we, we expect that we'll be able, uh, capable of terabit connections to and from the system. Right? 
<clears throat> so uh, here's a, a chart that's similar to what I just showed before, but sort of also shows how we're bringing in the system, right? So uh, we're, because of various timing issues and, and the way things sort of roll out from a technology perspective, we're bringing this in two phases, right? So we'll bring in the first phase uh, late this year, and that'll consist of uh, the GPU accelerated nodes, uh, all of the storage, <clears throat> Um, and uh, and uh, all of the associated uh, nodes that'll help us run this as a system, right? So that includes the login nodes, all of the nodes for you know high memory work uh, workflows, and so forth. Um, and then um, as well as the storage uh, and access to external storage. So it'll be fully integrated into NERSC, uh, just like uh, the systems we have. Milan CPUs will come in later in, in 2021, as will uh, the, the, the you know, client side of the high performance interconnect, right? uh, which is the, the slingshot part. <clears throat> uh, so what, uh, what does the system consist of? Uh, as I showed you, how is it built out, right? Um, and uh, the Ampere GPU nodes, as well as the Milan CPU nodes will both uh, go on blades. Uh, the blades will have a uh, different number of nodes depending on whether they're GPU accelerated or CPU only. All of those blades will go into a compute rack uh, and each rack will have 64 blades. So we'll have uh, either 128 nodes or, or uh, uh, 256 nodes depending on whether it's a GPU accelerated uh, blade or a CPU only blade. And then all of those racks will be put together to give us this Perlmutter system and then has 12 GPU racks and 12 CPU racks, right? Um, the, uh, you know, the other part that's important when it becomes a whole system is how do you get it all to work together, right? And uh, that's probably of most importance to, to you all as users. Uh, we have activities uh, in, uh, in the areas of network, the storage, uh, the application readiness work, as well as the system software work to uh, ensure that this uh, system that's been put together will work really well uh, for our users and be a productive system, right? And so you can see from those four areas that all of those four areas are things that are, are new technologies to Perlmutter. Um, they're not just new to Perlmutter, they're also new technologies overall, right? Uh, the the high-speed network is a brand new technology from Cray. The all flash storage uh, is gonna be one of the first times that all flash storage is run uh, on a shared file system, which is luster based at the scale, right? Uh, for the kinds of workloads that, the diverse kinds of workloads that we have. Um, obviously GPUs are new, but uh, running it in production for our diverse workload at the scale of users and at the scale of science that our users do is new. And so getting our apps ready for it uh, is an important uh, part of that effort. And the system software that ties everything together is also a new uh, revision of the, the system software that Cray has been putting out. Okay. So uh, if there are any questions, please speak up. I don't know how uh, Rajin or uh, others you want to handle the questions. But, uh, so, I, you know, uh, you're going to have plenty of talks today on, on um, uh, you know, over the next couple of days on GPUs and so forth. And Max is coming right after me, I think, to give more details on uh, on GPUs. But uh, uh, the A100 uh, was just recently released, right? Um, uh, obviously, we didn't have as grand a, a release as if uh, people had to it, were able to attend GTC in person. Uh, but hopefully, everybody has uh, listened to the talks and things like that from GTC and seen uh, the features that. Um, and Pierre has. Uh, so we'll be getting the A100, which is a, a, an implementation of the GA100 GPU, right? And you can see all of these statistics, these you know, stats and speeds and feeds on there. And we're looking at uh, things like, you know, uh, almost 20 teraflops with the tensor core on FP64 and so forth. So uh, the other features that really uh, are of importance to, we believe to our users, and uh, in fact, that uh, uh, the talks over the next couple of days are addressing uh, 
or things like, uh, you know, how are these things connected together and how are you going to be able to use, uh, you know, the four of them that we have on each node on Perlmutter effectively within Relink 3, right? Um, this multi-instance GPU uh, technology that Ampere puts together is very interesting. We're going to have it available in Perlmutter, of course, and uh, to use it effectively, we're going to have to be able to integrate that uh, and, and make it uh, expose that technology to our users uh, through our workload manager and through how uh, users access the system from a scheduling point of view. And that's something that we're going to be looking at very closely between now and when Promoter comes into service. Uh, the TF32 support, and I think uh, Jack and uh, Shin talked about this, is the, the mixed. There's going to be a number of talks on uh, mixed precision stuff work. Uh, that's going to be very interesting. So uh, I think uh, that technology is going to be explored as well um, over the next uh, couple of days here. Uh, for the system that we have, uh, you know, I just wanted to touch on one specific aspect of the all flash file system. Um, so this one, uh, obviously it's uh, all flash, uh, it's luster based, and it has, a, it's going to be fast, it's going to be usable, and it's optimized, right? So it's fast across multiple dimensions, it has high bandwidth, because it's all flash, it has uh, excellent IO, uh, uh, IOPS performance, and it's uh, able to Sorry, this should say <laughs> not 3.2, but 3.2 million uh, file creates per second, right? Uh, uh, it's going to be usable for our users. There's 35 petabytes of usable capacity that's uh, on, essentially, on the machine, right? Um, it's not a remote uh, file system uh, that you have to access to a, a small network pipe or anything. It's on the machine. It's part of the fabric uh, that the compute nodes are on and that the GPU and the CPU nodes are on. It has familiar Lester interfaces, so you people are able to use it. And we're gonna have data movement capabilities uh, that are new uh, that allow people to move data seamlessly between the tiers, right? So one of the tiers we're talking about is the storage, the external file systems that we have, and, um, and obviously things like, uh, uh, you know, the archival storage and, and so forth. So, um, <clears throat> And then uh, finally, there's a number of optimizations that Luster clearly works at scale, as people know now on Cori. Uh, but uh, with all flash, you have to uh, worry about things like how, how does small file I.O. perform? How do, how do we take advantage of these high ops that are there uh, and so forth? And we're, we're making sure that the file system is optimized for that. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing that, you know, uh, we talked about was these four uh, centers of excellence areas that we have on Perlmutter to make sure that the system's ready for our users. Uh, obviously, the, the thing that's probably of most interest uh, to you all is that uh, application readiness box in, in yellow. But, you know, we do have a number of other areas that will, uh, perhaps while working in the background, will make, uh, hopefully, your lives easier when you do use the system. Uh, that includes things like system software and scheduling. How do we schedule the multiple resources? And even drilling down into the node, how do you make sure that things like the multi-instance GPU technology is available in a fashion that makes it useful for multiple users to use the same uh, core GPU uh, partitioned into multiple instances and things like that. Uh, the workflow architecture, which uh, enables people to support you know, data-intensive workloads and things like that. How do we make sure that that's available on a system that's going to be new, that uh, has new system software stack, that has this diverse workload on it? Uh, the storage I just talked about, uh, making sure that all of those features available on Perlmutter are tested, ready for our users, and the networking as well, which enables this us to take advantage uh, of this uh, Ethernet-compatible network. So make, make available all of the features that uh, <clears throat> allow Ethernet to, to sort of connect up to the outside world in a seamless fashion, available on in, in the inside of the system as well. Dave, yeah, we're just coming to the end of the 15 minutes, if you can come to okay. a tidy yeah. block and then we'll take a few questions. Awesome. Yeah, I just have a couple of more slides, I think. So um, uh, the other aspect that's useful of this effort is the NESAP program uh, that I think you're gonna hear uh, a little bit obliquely about, I think, but it's really the basis of all of the interactions 
that nurse staff are having with our users uh, to get them ready for GPU, right? And so goal here really is to prepare not just our users, but all of the OE Office of Science users for Perlmutter. And the way we're doing it is using the same model that they've done before <coughs> uh, with Cori, which is to partner closely with uh, a broad range of application teams and with the vendor uh, and apply those uh, lessons that we learn with those partnerships to a broad community, right? Uh, the NESAP effort specifically for Perlmutter is gonna part partner with uh, about over 50 application teams across two tiers uh, that uh, have slightly different levels of engagement. Uh, and, uh, and the work that uh, you're gonna hear about, I think, uh, will, will show you how well we're doing. And in fact, that's what has given us uh, some confidence that the uh, GPU system and the CPU system and the way we've divided up the resources on our Perlmutter system uh, into those two uh, uh, you know, technologies is, uh, is gonna be useful for our users. And it is in fact what motivated us to ensure that we get in the GPUs and make those available to our users as soon as possible. Uh, the, there's other work that isn't sort of formally part of the project but that NERSC is doing. Uh, we're working with uh, you know, PGI to enable OpenMP uh, GPU acceleration. And that's an uh, effort that I think you're gonna hear about a little bit. Uh, we're obviously, uh, performance portability is a key aspect of making sure that these systems are usable, or, are productive for our users, right? Uh, not just on nurse, because nobody runs just on nurse. People run all across uh, resources in the DOE complex. And so, uh, and, and then finally, you know, in terms of how we present this information to our users, you know, people have hopefully seen our strong presence at GTC, uh, even though it was virtual providing information and training to our users. Uh, we have quarterly hackathons uh, to focus on su support uh, on porting all of these applications to GPUs. And we partnered with uh, other DOE labs in these community hackathons as well. So in summary, we're, we're really excited to be able to introduce Perlmutter, which is the system that's optimized for science to our broad user base. Uh, our staff have been engaging uh, with our users to ensure readiness for the system. And uh, the, the effort that the postdocs here have put in to bring this, uh, <clears throat> this set of sessions to our users is sort of testament to that. Uh, we have a very strong training effort in collaboration with NVIDIA and Cray HPE to give new uh, information about the new technologies in Perlmutter to our users. And uh, we really look forward to working with you all to make Perlmutter a very productive platform the next generation of platform for our users. And uh, I'll stop there. Um, happy to take any uh, questions that you have. Okay, so thanks for that, uh, that Jay. We have time for one or two questions. If you stick them in the Q&A session. Uh, we had a question there from Hugo. Hugo, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah. Hello, Jay. Uh, you show a slide with the, the synergy of the different uh, team working on the network, on the app readiness and other boxes uh, uh, for building Pelmeter and making it an efficient machine. Um, how would you describe the synergy between all these um, uh, factors that make Perlmutter uh, a good supercomputer and uh, is it used by the end users? Like how all these uh, teams work together to, to make it uh, transparent to end user? Yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, Perlmutter is really uh, the focus, <clears throat> the most important focus of NERSC, I would argue, right? And, uh, what that means is, you know, we at NERSC, we have a formal project that says, okay, we're going to bring in the next generation of the system that we have. Over 50% of NERSC staff are directly working on the effort to bring in uh, Perlmutter into production, right? And so when we've split it up into these different groups, uh, really what that's saying is that there's a... a <clears throat> a focused effort uh, by these different groups of people on these different areas of the project 
but overall, it's part of bringing in the same system. So, you know, all of these teams, uh, we we have uh, you know weekly meetings to to bring in uh, to bring together all of the efforts that these people are doing. Uh, all of these people are going to be participating and uh, are already participating in some of the early test uh, test bed hardware that we have, which isn't yet uh, at the scale where we can expose it to users, or it isn't doesn't necessarily have all of the technology. Uh, that would make it useful to expose it to users. But for the staff effort, uh, it's possible for the staff to start getting access to some or all of this technology gradually between now and the end of this year uh, when we have Pulmutter in there. And so all of those efforts that uh, people are working on um, sort of mesh together in, in the back end, if you will, right, without necessarily being exposed to the users right away at this point. Uh, but it is part of one big project that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like I said, over over uh, half of uh, uh, nurse staff are directly working on Perlmutter-related activities uh, at this point, right? And have been for the last uh, year, really. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Okay. Um, I'm going to need to move on. So if you do have any further questions, um, please do put them in the Q&A and we will uh, bring them up.